Back to House of Strikes, guys. Uh, we're gonna jump right into our next segment, uh, which is gonna where we're gonna be talking about. Um, we were supposed to talk about uh, Oki of the Week, but uh, we're actually gonna switch the program a little bit and talk about um, the uh, my the brother's Yemen, keeper, the, the Yemen brothers, the uh, Yemen brothers, Adam, and, the Adam, Adam, Adam 3S, and Ahmed. Who, those of you, those of you who've been watching uh, Fight Club, you may have, you may know them from. Uh, you know, as notorious chump players that you've seen play, uh, where everybody's been hyping up about, and you know, and I mean, I don't, I don't know what to say about them, but all right. You know. So I think what we're talking about, right, is who's the better Alhanshali brother, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm Team Ahmed. Matt Daniels is officially on Team Ahmed, so team you have to hold that. Well, I will say this, right, because you have to look at things a different way, right? Because you could say to bring a basketball analogy in, right? That Will Chamberlain was better than Bill Russell, but Bill Russell won more, right? I think it's the exact same analogy that you can uh, bring over to Adam and Ahmed because Adam technically is so much better than Ahmed. Like he can hit confirm, he knows all of his setups, he knows all that cute shit that all the Japanese players know. He's good, he's fucking good. Yeah, I want to retract that. But, <laughs> but, but at Ahmed, he understands how to win more. He knows how to turn it up, and he knows how to win, like, flat out. He just understands the moment, and he knows how to go for it. And I think if you were to, like, who I, who would I want on a team if I only had to pick one? I'd probably pick Ahmed because he knows how to win more. Yeah. He knows how to just he, he close out, and he's he's aggressive, and he's fucking, he's a psychopath. And you want a psychopath Chun on your team. I would take a psychopath Chun over a... Uh, a measure Chun Li on a team turn. It's only one game, and I want my Chun Li to go fucking ape shit and press back fierce and guess and do all that crazy shit that Ahmed does. So I'm gonna take Ahmed. Um, I would. It for me, it's like I mean, again, I'm all, I'm always like you know on the back and forth side because Adam obviously he's he's one of the best players in casuals, but then when it comes to tournaments, he just does not play to the best of his ability, which sucks. But you know, I mean, it, shit happens. Uh, but Ahmed, obviously, he wants to win more. He he wants he take he takes the matches more more seriously. And case in point, you know, I mean, you probably remember from the 25th anniversary when they actually played each other. Oh man! And that was one of the most heartbreaking slash tragic, like the biggest tragedies. One of the most um, dramatic matches you've ever seen in your entire third strike playing career or whatever. But after that match where Adam beat Ahmed in a two to one set, Ahmed was gonna. He looked like he looked like he was gonna open fire on that poor like twenty fifth anniversary crew. Somebody. Like the niggas playing cross tech and were gonna get fucked. Like somehow they were gonna get bombed. Yeah. It straight was, up. It was, it was bad. Like he was gonna like Kareem hook shot bomb into the SF. <laughs> oh my god, he was he was definitely gonna put like C four. He was gonna. He he looked up fucking set. But that's that thing. It's it's that they have that fierce like brotherly that like brotherly. competitive rivalry, and the reason for it is because Adam, he knows how to inject his win into any conversation. Yeah. He's fucking brilliant. Like we could be out like having sushi, and he'll dunk his little his little tempura into some soy sauce, and he'd be like, yo. That was when I UOH'd him right into Super! <laughs> <laughs> and Ahmed, and Ahmed would just look at him like, fuck you. <laughs> but that's that thing, and, and, and that's what you want to see out of competitors. You want to see some genuine fucking hate. Yeah. And that's what makes matches hype. 
It makes it even better that they're brothers too. It makes it perfect. It makes because if you have them side by side, you wouldn't think they're brothers because of how like starkly their fucking personalities like contrast. Yeah. But and their game has that same exact like contrast as well because they play like light like night and day. That is true. Yeah them too so when you see them play each other when the when the person who and you every time you see them when whoever wins they fucking like body the other guy yeah. and it's because of that uh, they fucking hate losing to one another obviously Wait, so they, Ahmed is Jeff Hardy and, Ahmed and Adam is Matt Hardy no 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 <laughs> Ahmed is no 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 <laughs> wait Adam is Jeff Adam is Jeff Adam is Je- <laughs> yeah no. not Jeff Hardy will jump off the top rope yeah, Jeff Hardy is the world champ is he? Yeah. No, he's he, not. He's the world, he, he won the world champ. Won okay, the world if that's the case, I was thinking because oh, yeah. Matt Hardy got like intercontinental a couple times, right? <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. It's like Ahmed wins more, but yeah. So Ahmed is Jeff Hardy. Okay, but if I if I had to have a sit down session and be like, "Yo, prepare me for this tournament," I'm taking Adam all the way. Of course, yeah. Take like take because he knows all of the tech. He knows how to prepare people for your like quintessential Chun Li play. He he understands that, and you'll get some good practice out of him. But if I'm if I'm on the same side as a motherfucker, I'm taking Ahmed. Ahmed, I want to I want I want to go to war with the motherfucker who punched me in the face if he gets too hype. His own teammate. Like Ahmed will fucking kill like the people on his team. That's how intense he gets. He's fucking hype. He gets crazy. And I fucking want that. I want ill. He he gets crazy, and I want that. In a teammate, again, they both have their strengths and weaknesses. Yeah. That's why I love having both of them on my team. So who's Lloyd taking? Uh, Aloy took. Who I, do you take? I, 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 I you gotta take someone. Uh, I'm going with Ahmed because uh, I'm I'm going to war. All right. He is my drone. Yo, you come home and you notice your case of coronas is missing. Who you call? Adam or Ahmed? You gotta ride on someone. I would, I would, I would pick Adam. Adam would replace the six pack. Ahmed would kill the motherfucker who took <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah, I would. I would pick Adam like in the as as a teammate. I would pick Adam because obviously he he knows the matchups. He knows everything about you know the game. Whereas Ahmed, he's just like, okay, fuck this guy right now, and you know you better do it. But it's like if if I lose, then Ahmed is gonna like either win really really well or lose really 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 bad. And I don't want somebody on my team to lose really, really, really bad if they're an anchor. Ahmed is the J.R. Smith of third. <laughs> oh, no. oh, yeah. He's pretty streaky. Yeah. He's pretty streaky, but at the same time, it's like... <laughs> like I, I'm, I'm just afraid that every time if, if I put Ahmed on my team, I'm going to catch him on a cold streak, and I don't want that. I don't know, but that's the thing. is like Adam's never on like a hot streak, you well, know? That, that, so that's, that's, that's the shit. Like, that's the trade-off. You got to like live with it. I think Ahmed is like best as the front person of the team. And Adam is best as like an anchor, cause he knows how to slow the match. He knows how to like play at his own pace. He'll do what he has to do. He'll probably lose though if it, if the player gets too crazy. But again, it's that whole thing. Like, what would you rather take? Would you rather take technique or would you rather take fucking firepower, just brute strength? From from what I've seen, I would put I w- I would actually do the opposite. I would put Adam first. And I'm you're right. Adam, Adam, I would. Put I didn't want to because, agree with you, but yeah, you're right. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I would put Adam first, not because you know he's not good as an anchor, but but his mind is clearer when he's up yeah, front. Not only he doesn't that, have to think the, as much. The like he's not. not yeah, yeah, yeah. The pressure isn't there yet. The fact that he's using Chun too, and you know he could just go. Into yeah, the he could OCV a team if he's on a good streak because he's so yeah. technically sound. He knows how to get people into bad positions with Chun Li. That's you know that's, I mean? that's why I say like if it was on my team. Like, for example, if it was me and you and then Adam, I would feel comfortable with him on my team because, simply because, you know, Adam, he's he's a good chum player. And, you know, obviously we would put him first to, like, let him just clear out everybody. And up until, you know, we got his back if we have to. And, you know, I'm, I'm confident enough in myself to carry my team if I have to, but, you know, as difficult as it may be. But as long as I have a comfortable partner there, Adam, who knows what he's doing, and who's not as... Risky as Ahmed would be, then you know I'm, I'm fine. With I don't him. know. I'll take Ahmed, man. He won a major. Wait, how was your? I'll team take him. How was your? Life? Ours, we were like going. Well, our mindset was like. Um, it seemed like you were anchor pretty much. All the I was the anchor, but there was a moment there where um, Adam and Ahmed weren't exactly like all the way confident against um, Helgen mm-hmm. and Tenchi's team, so they wanted me to go first. And I ended up OCVing them. Um, but yeah, I think the whole plan was to kind of like show them two, like 
con uh, two drastically different styles of Chun Li and hope that it it won the match. And if it didn't, then I'd come in. Um, yeah, but that was it. I honestly, I think I would take Ahmed on the team if I needed a training partner. I would take Adam though. He just knows a lot. He knows so much. So when it, so then when I just think I just think Ahmed's the better competitor. <clears throat> I think you can say you can make an argument that Adam's the better player, but Ahmed's the better competitor. And they both have their places. They both have their yeah, places. they both have their places because I think you yeah, know, the competitor always has. Especially in a one game thing, man. In a one game thing where it's like three on three players, you want to put your nutty Chun Li, you know, and have him there because you know he's going to like want to wreck shit. He's not going to give up, you know. And, and that's another thing. Um, Adam might get a bit um, discouraged if the round's not going his way, but Ahmed always thinks he can like clutch around. Yeah. He prides himself on that ability to clutch people out. It's funny. One prime example I can think of was with the, that one NEC where we had the, the cat the first time. And you were on teams with, uh, you were on teams with... Both of them. With both of them, right? Yeah, but back oh, then, I, Adam was playing with Yun. I thought it was Yang he was using. No. Oh, yeah, yeah he, he picked Yang. Yeah. Right? yeah, because me and Ahmed were going through everybody. He never had to play. Mm -hmm. So, when by the time we got to the finals, we ended up playing um, EXO's team. And EXO beat me mm -hmm. with Dudley. And he was like, oh, I'm going to go with Yang because that's like a pretty good matchup for Dudley. Like, he thought like he'd be able to beat him with Yang. And he ended up, he ended up fucking him up pretty bad. But it's that thing, you know, like he has that matchup knowledge so he can kind of go back and forth. Yeah. But that we got lucky in that me and Ahmed didn't have to play. Like, we, Adam didn't have to play because me and Ahmed were fucking everybody shit up. Yeah. So. That's, that's pretty, that's puts less weight on him, and that's actually the best way to go about it. And I think we were up a set anyway, so we had a set to play with. Yeah, I, I think you guys were a winner. I think we were a winner, yeah. yeah. We beat Mewen's team, too. Yeah, we beat Mewen's team, and we beat Justin's team, so I think we were... In that, like yeah, we were in one, winners. That's one example I can think of too. Didn't didn't you beat me in that? Yeah, I beat you in that tournament, and then Justin fucking laid me out. Like, that, was, that was like one of the big reliefs for for Ahmed. I can imagine. Oh yeah. Because he was because like the moment I can you could see it like when he played against Justin. Oh man. He just oh, didn't man. give a shit. He didn't he care. Like, he didn't he respect like, him at all, and that's what you need. You need that type of mentality going into a one game match. Yeah. Because yeah. if if you were to tell me yo Ahmed could beat Justin in two out of three, even right now I'd be like yo you're fucking crazy. Yeah. But in a one game I want Ahmed because he. He doesn't have any fear of anybody. He doesn't care what you do. No, because he has a law on his side. He also he, <laughs> he doesn't care. A lot. He has a lot, and he has that hydrogen bomb known as low forward super, and he's gonna fucking go at you knowing like knowing full well he has the best character in the game, and he plays like he has the best character in the game. Yeah, it, it's funny. It's because <laughs> like. It, like he knows he knows some matchups too. Like his reactions are good enough where like you know he can play footsies with you know a lot of the you characters. Know, he's not a guesser either. People think he's a guess parry. He's not. He he makes intelligent uh um intelligent reads. He makes informed reads based on the character yeah, you're yeah, playing. Based on you know, right. So the stuff that's happening. yeah. So like, like for instance, against a Dudley player, if you're out of range for a Stan Roundhouse, why would you guess up? Where the most damaging option would be sweep. Even, right even in that range, why would you po yeah. why why would you guess up? If you're gonna guess at all, you're gonna guess low because if you if you get hit with that sweep, you're eating dicks, you're eating Dudley dicks. Even. No, so it's just a matter of knowing your opponents, you know, like the other characters' ranges, knowing what nets them the most damage. If you're a guesser, and you go with the most favorable option, and he he gets away with it a lot because he has Chun Li, yeah. he gets a parry and he gets forty percent and he's God, yeah. or a lot. Sorry. It's it's frustrating to play against, but it's good to play with mm -hmm. if you think about it that way. But you know, like I said, there is pros and cons with them. But in terms of who's better, I chose Adam. Uh, Frankie chose. I chose Ahmed. Ahmed. And for sure. You know, I mean, it would be nice to actually see them have a run back in the next Fight Club. I mean, you know, I've I've always wanted to see them play again where they have more than just like a two out of three set. Or you know maybe even a first to five where they could like play each other with all their fucking characters because I remember specifically that Ahmed was like yo if I picked a different character I would have I would have bodied his shit no, which like, is something that's pretty peculiar to me because you know if you pick the best character in, in the game and you know no matter if it's your brother or not you should do something to win you know so. Hmm. And okay. you know Next segment. that that brings up the question if it was it, it does it does it reflect on the type of player that that you are 
in the sense that I guess if you're very aggressive as a player, then you know, then you're Ahmed. If you're as calculated, then you'll be like Adam. Mm -hmm. and, you know, it it go it, it does it does reflect on the type of player that you are, because you know obviously if you're calculated, then you know you'll overthink something, and you know when it comes to when it comes to tournaments, you don't really want to overthink everything. Yeah. You know? So, but uh, yeah. So uh, what's next? It's on the teleprompter. It's on the teleprompter. So now for the uh, for the next segment, we're actually gonna go into. Or are we gonna take a break? Or no, we're gonna go right into it. We're gonna jump right into that motherfucker. The the next the next part of the stream that we're gonna go into is OK of the week that we actually came up with for this specific type of uh, stream. What we're gonna do is we're gonna run through uh, one of our favorite matches of, of the recent recent week, last week or either this week or you know something that's recent yep. from uh, a match from Japan, and you know we're gonna break it down you know point by point and you know hopefully you guys learn a thing or two from yep. you know the Oki of the week. Yep. So. And before we get started, we want to give a huge shout out to Friend 3S for always posting links to Japanese Third Strike. Um, Friend 3S on SRK. On SRK, that fucking helps, right? Because I wouldn't know any of this shit if it wasn't for him posting on this. So it's, thank Shout you. To Shout outs to Italy and all of their pizza and shit. Alright, so my match of the week is Matsuken Ken versus Hiroyuki with Chun Li. Um, just to give you guys like a sense of parallax from like other fighting games, the best play, like the best type of character in the game can control every other type of character in the game. So what I mean by that is that Morrigan in uh, Marvel 3, she will control the entire match. She It doesn't matter what type of character you are, she'll make you do the same thing and make you, force you to play her game. And that's exactly what Chun-Li does, right? So what I like about this match is that although there's a lot of flashy shit that happens and catches your eye and like, oh man, that was fucking cool, cool. What I like about it is that Ken dealt with Chun-Li by following the basic rules that you should play against Chun Li, and I'll, I'll say it again, you know there is like a moment in in Third Strike where you have to learn how to deal with Chun Li, or you're not gonna have a good time, right? So he followed these basic rules throughout throughout the entire match. He was always second. That means you don't try to press a button with Chun Li. You see, it's flashy shit that makes you go, "Whoa, this match is sick." But again, it's all within it. It's all like part of his plan. And the plan is you all were, you're always supposed to be second against Chun Li with Ken because you're not gonna match her button by button. This bitch is too good, right? So you're gonna make her whiff and then you make her pay. Next thing is you have to attack her on her wake up. You gotta push her towards the corner with your dashes just like Matsuken does. You gotta force her to make some tough decisions on wake up. Force her to use a super. Look, look, this guy he missed that. He had the right idea. That was a bad punish. But it was a bad punish, right? So you know this motherfucker Yuki is giving him some. He's giving him some leeway. That, that, that didn't work either. Oh my god. And then another thing that he follows is that whenever he's on the receiving end of Chun Li's pressure, he never wakes up a throw. He never presses throw. Don't press throw against Chun Li. You take the throw. Because the difference is, ooh, I take a throw. Or you eat a fucking hydrogen bomb to the face. Yeah. That is her <laughs> super art. Right? So again, you just want to follow these rules because as a third strike player, if you want to get good, if you want to have fun, you have to follow these rules against Chun-Li and deal with it because this bitch is that good and motherfuckers will play her because she's that good. You know? And again, this has to take place. You know? There has to be, like I said this word before, there has to be this inculcation, right? Where you're taking in all of these rules, these rules that you have to learn in order to beat Chun-Li because this bitch is fucking good. All right, and you will have a bad time. But you see, he's not being no, first. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's waiting for her to make a decision. He gets into a, a, a good position and he presses a button. He beats her that way. That's how you're supposed to play Chun Li with Ken. I have a great time playing against Chun Li because you know what? All the patience in the world. I have all the time. Please build your meter. I'm confident in my footsies. I'm gonna fuck you up. Mm. All right, and that's how you have to have that attitude. It doesn't matter what character you play. Those are the rules that you have to have against Chun Li. You are always second, you attack around her wake up, and you do not press throw for any circumstances on defense. That will get you a long way. Learn to deal with it, stop bitching about Chun-Li, and you'll get better. Yeah. And that's all that we want to do. We want to get you guys better. You will play Chun-Li's, but you learn to fuck her up. 
That's what we want. One little uh, thing that you can do with that too is obviously the fact that you don't have to take the, I mean, you can take the throw, but there's also techniques against that where you don't have to worry about the throw. So if you guys haven't haven't uh, heard about it, uh, there's a technique called guard jump and parry jump that you can use. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna go into the specifics of it right now, but you can. It's fucking it. awesome. It's, it's really, really, really good. So you know, it's something that you guys can use against carry grabs and. It makes you like yeah. pro. Keep that in mind, and if you want to learn more about it, uh, feel free to check it out on my YouTube channel as a video. And you'll find out more. You will find out a lot. So but what's your match? My my match is uh, not really one of the most you know exciting matches, but it highlights you know a little you know the matchup between Yang and Chun. Obviously, with Yang you have to really play not necessarily calculated, but you have to play as. Would you say measured? Yeah, basically, basically you can't, measured. You can't yeah. go crazy. Yeah, you, you can't go crazy, cakes, right? You gotta like be like, all right, I respect you because you're fucking good, bitch. Sort of. Okay. Sort of. I mean, you can use certain tactics against her, like in the sense that uh, using his low forward. Uh, uh, his low forward is actually really fast, and you can always whiff it on on Chun, and it'll be hard for her to punish it. Obviously, she has standing fierce low forward to punish it, but. It's it's one of those things that you can use to bait out the ground game, and that's where you know it allows Yang to come in with the dive kicks. Now Furo, he's not really you know fond of using that. He's more of a block string type of player, and you can see right here he's just focusing on doing you know just regular block strings, either with slashes or or you can see like he's fucking boring. Yeah, and it, it's really <laughs> slow paced, and it's not really something that I prefer. But it's something, uh. and that's one of the punishments that that goes against it because if you have a player that a Yang player that does a lot of you know block strings like that, then you know it makes it really easy to counter just from a simple parry or or low forward or anything from Chun. So you know you have to really be calculated in your spacing and not really commit to uh, block strings. Whereas right here, obviously Chun has no meter, so he can go in right now. But he's just wasting time, like just you know doing slashes like that instead of going for a grab or a command grab or something like that. And it's really frustrating because you know you have to open her up. Oh, there it goes, there Command it throw. Oh, and you get grabbed. It's stupid. She a better punish there. He he, he tried a certain little tactic where like he did a uh, like jump forward jump forward into the chain and he can mix up the side that he's on. Lloyd, could an argument be made that he was just block stringing her so that he could command throw her in, in round three because he's been going for it like crazy and he won. That, that was and he that he was bodied her shit. That was pretty nice. We could probably take a replay on that. Oh man, let's see that instant replay. <laughs> that was good. I got low forward super too. Yeah, and you know what? You know what I like about that match? Thanks for bringing it up, Lloyd. But he followed the same exact rules that Matsuken did to fuck up um, Chun Li. He was That's second true. a lot of the time. That's he true. wasn't pressing the. And you have to think about literal advantage in terms of frames. If this bitch is on the floor, you can attack. You can press a button. But if you guys are in neutral, don't press anything because you're gonna have a bad time. Not only that, but the fact that, you know, for those of you who don't know, Chun actually has more block stun. Uh, the, the Chun has actual, has more block stun on when she's, when she's blocking. So if you happen to hit her with a, fra a move that, that is normally minus one on block or minus two on block, it'll probably be about minus two or minus three, depending on uh, if she's standing or crouching, I believe. I'm not really, uh, too sure about it, but um, you know, I could double check. And if you guys have any more questions, you can, you know, send us a message or something. But uh, again, now, real quick, I'm a consumer, right? I'm thinking about what the fuck this guy just talked about. What the hell are you talking about, jump parry? What is this wizardry? What is this witchcraft, saying, right? Yeah. How do I find this? If I go online, I go on YouTube, search up SF3LP, how do I find that particular video? So the, the specific technique is obviously guard jump that you can find on. No, no, where do I find it on your channel? You can find. Like how like how would I go about the business of finding that video well, if I wanted to? You can just search guard jump, guard jump, uh, Nika Ko stream on on YouTube and you'll find it right there. It's just the guard jump, Nika Ko. Guard jump and it's and it's right there and you'll and you'll see it. I'll, I break it down as much as I can, but there's a couple little nuances in it that you can probably figure out by asking other players. But you know, it basically describes the basic idea of guard jump, which is pretty useful even for Yang versus Chun. And I haven't really noticed if Furo used it against the. He against didn't. Player, he didn't. He's basic as shit. He's yeah, a basic yeah, bitch. I mean, it, it's it's too basic. I mean, He's I, vanilla. I, I didn't like the way. Fuck. I mean, it's not really my favorite match, but I mean, it's one of the best matches that I can highlight to figure out the Yang versus Chun matchup. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, 
it's but again you can kind of it goes back to that whole thing you know bring it back to the basics don't try to overcomplicate things fudo beat um what's his face hiroyuki with like low forward slash and that was it you know so keep, if things are going bad for you keep it basic yeah. i think that's what we can get to and it's it's pretty it's pretty tough but uh you know it worked out for him so you know it's whatever style you guys want i mean not really judging between which style is better or which style is more preferred but you know it's whatever you guys pick and you know it's it's just difference in styles you know so it happens and guys we will be taking a quick commercial break pretty soon um after the break we'll be talking we will be ranking our north carolina brethren um by how much they're good or how bad they suck really <laughs> so please uh stay tuned and enjoy the commercials and we'll be back with uh, a couple more announcements with uh for summer jam so yeah stay tuned
Welcome back, guys. Welcome back. We are back with House of Strikes. We're on our last segment of the night. And we're going uh, to jump right into it. Right? We're going to jump right into we're it. jump right into it. Have you guys noticed that we've been um, putting up the advertisements for the North Carolina tournament that's going on? Probably as we speak. It's probably going on as we speak. I mean, we're not really too yeah. sure of the uh, the stream channel that's been that's that's been posted, but we don't even know if it's actually been posted or not. But apparently, you know, it's the best arcade on the East Coast. The best arcade on the East Coast. Has yet to be determined. Oh, and we just got the Twitch the Twitch thing right here on the teleprompter. We just Twitch, got it. Twitch.tv slash Lost. Lost. Underscore arc, arc underscore, underscore video, video underscore games. It Check is, them out. Well, we can just post it in the chat. So for those of you who are viewing and who are on the chat, you, mm -hmm. can, you can check out the link when we post it in the chat. So. Yep. But um, yeah, I mean, there's been a lot of talk about uh, North Carolina. I mean, last year they had uh, they had arcade dice trick at TFC, the mm -hmm. Fall Classic. For those of you who don't know, it's ran by Big E, uh, um, basically the biggest tournament organizers on the East Coast. Uh, it's ran by um, Long Big Island Joe, Big E, Long Island Joe, and uh, Shin Blanca. Shin Blanca. We were going to uh, final round. So uh, yeah, I mean they they ran TFC last year, and they obviously they had their show on arcade, and they had a tournament, which apparently top three was actually all North Carolina. All North Carolina. So of course, as the East Coast stands, I mean obviously we're not you know ones to take shit like that, so we're obviously gonna have to. You know, stir up some shit. Well, and uh, you know, we saw those rankings, and then they ended up uh, kind of feeling themselves. After you know, this, you know, with the with the idea. Oh that, man, whenever. With Just the idea up. that you know, that North Carolina has the best players on the East Coast, yep. which unfortunately it does not. Well, you know, they have a small but dedicated third strike community. They have a really and condensed. Third and that's exactly what this segment is going to um, be based on. We're going to rank the top five North Carolina players. Who's that best Tar Heel? Oh my lord. Is that Jibbo? So, uh, Ugh! Who lives throw like that? You guys so fucking suck. That's <laughs> so basic. Alright, whatever. Anyways, so would you like to start off your top five? Do you have them on deck? Because I have mine on deck. Uh, you can start. You, you want me to start? You can start. Alright, at five, we have Fran Thirstrike. Fran Thirstrike, who was recently part of the. Fantastic. Fantastic, sorry, not Fran Thirstrike, but Fantastic. I have him at number five. Um. He was basically shitted from the New Jersey scene. Um, they didn't want him anymore, so they put him in a trash compost and they shipped him out to North Carolina. Um, he's a fun dude to be around. I don't think he's that great of a third striker. There he goes right there. He doesn't like the hype. Bloviating, even though he sucks. All right, so at number four, we have Knuckle Dust. I believe he plays Makoto. Yes, he does. Yeah, it's shitty. Okay, so he's going to be at number four. Um, face. <laughs> face, that guy. Face, what a face. He, I, I don't think he's that good. Uh, he plays Chun Li. Yeah, That's the only reason he's number three above Fran and, and Knuckle <laughs> Dust. Because he plays with Chun Li and that bitch hurts sometimes. But his is kind of ticklish. Anyways, number one and number two, they're both tied. We got Jibbo and Common Sense. Number one and number two, because I haven't played them that much, so they might equally suck. That's why they're both number one and number two. They're tied, Jibbo and Common Sense. Common Sense plays with Dudley, right? Yes, he does. Fucking shit. That nigga sucks. All right, sorry. Uh, Jibbo plays with Hugo. That character blows balls. I played him at NEC, and I think I beat him at every tournament I've ever played him at. I think he's a really good Street Fighter 4 player, but leave that shit at Street Fighter 4. Don't come to Third Strike with that Hugo shit, all right? Go back to Yang, all right? Because you're losing a lot. Uh, common Sense. Honestly, I haven't seen... Again... Again, I haven't seen Common Sense play that much. He plays with Dudley. Um, he won that tournament, right? He actually, yeah, he actually yeah. won it with Dudley, which is um, it's not saying much because you're playing a bunch of guys who plays 3S with helmets on. So that's not really saying much that you won a tournament over there. And no New York player showed up at TFC, so good shit uh, for winning a padded tournament with nobody good there. Not even, not even EXO showed up? Not even EXO showed up. Nobody showed up. Um, again, we're here to uh, promote... We really want them to come to Summer Jam because as shitty as we think they are, they're actually pretty good. Um, but not in any way that poses any danger to us. So, uh, But we really want them to come through. Again, we want to thank Jibbo because as you know, he plays Street Fighter 4 really good, but he makes music even better. And that's whose music you've been hearing during all of our commercial breaks and transitions is his music. He's fucking good. We're going to post a link 
uh, um, on his uh, SoundCloud, right? He has a SoundCloud. We're going to post that shit up because he, he put some really good baby-making music on. He knows how to make that shit. I've had like seven abortions since I've heard his music because we just keep making babies. We keep shitting them out. You feel me? Um, but that's my top five. Again, I'm going to run through it again. Fantastic. Cause he sucks uh, Knuckle does Cause he sucks A little bit less Face cause he plays With Chun Lee Even though he sucks Probably more than Fran And Jibbo and Common Sense Are tied at number one Because I don't really See them play that much But I got a lot of Respect for Jibbo So he's up there So what's the North Carolina Threat assessment Are they yellow Orange Threat They're probably Like Green. baby blue <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They're fucking Gerber. They're like Pampers. All right. They have no. They they don't pose a threat to me whatsoever. Um, yeah. They're. I don't think. I don't. Th- you know. They have a cute arcade. Ready G. Um, privilege. You know. They have a good arcade in a nice location. They got some uh, third strike cabinets, and I think it's cute. Um, you know. They have all the hardware to be good players, but I don't think they have the brains to be great players. I don't think they're fucking with us at any capacity of the level. You know, at any capacity of the game, I don't think they're beating us. I think we would beat them at fucking, at everything. At fucking Tetris. At everything. Fucking crossword puzzles. We would fuck you guys up in life. Alright? We got some more bitches than you too over here in New York. Alright? So, that's all I'm gonna say about them. But, again, they have a great stream going on, so after you're done with us, please check them out. That is if they are streaming. If they are streaming. Unless they're that shitty that they can't stream at all. Because they're kind of fraudulent too. But they're good, so we want you guys to see them play, um, because they do do their part in terms of keeping Thirst Strike alive in their own little niche. So we want to just throw them a little shout out, even though they suck balls. (laughs) Uh, They're pretty good. They're alright. Basically, you guys do not want to, you know, cross us at any type of tournament because obviously we will shit on you guys, we will destroy you. So do not, do not, and I repeat, do not try to take any type of tournament results that no New York player or no other East Coast player is at and use that against anybody else because we will destroy you. Just throw it out. And Didn't even happen. I'm not even going to rank you guys because you guys are nothing to me. Wow. So uh, holy I'm not crap. I'm going to rank you guys on the... Scale wow. of East Coast, you guys cannot beat anybody. From Holy moly! Anybody in this room? Actually. Wait, is that my Yun beating Fantastic's Yun? That is. Yo, you me. fucking suck, <laughs> bro! God damn, I don't play with Yun. <laughs> That's what I said. You guys should really check out that video. It was, it was cute. Was and like, of course, we're seeing a couple of uh, non highlights. Yeah, some low lights. Non-lights. Some non lights. <laughs> Thanks for the. Not, not top five. Yeah, I mean, I honestly, in all seriousness, I think Jibbo is probably their best player. Yeah. Um, I think he just has a lot of tournament experience, but he plays with shitty Hugo. So if he, if he, if he, if he he's, played, he's good. He's he smart. If he pl- like as a Hugo player, he's yeah, like. He's yeah, he plays player. good. He he can. Yeah, he can rep parry, and he realizes that. You're so smart for saying that, because it's true. He understands that with that, like, that shitty a character, you got to be, like, superfluous in every other aspect of your game. You got to be on top of everything. The rep parries, the punishes, you all got to be on point, and he normally is. But uh, I'm too good, so that don't work on me, brother. Um, yeah. And common sense, I've never played him, but he's he's kind of blasphemous. I really want to get a chance to play him because he talks some shit, that Duke, guy. Duke so I really, oh, all right, Duke's better than you, so fuck off. Um, apparently, so maybe that could be Fight Club for it. Maybe his, Duke versus Common Sense if they actually show up. Who won Duke or Fight Club? Um, Hispanic, Hispanic Jab beat Dakota. him. The one moment he had. The thing that the thing that I don't okay starting starting from common sense the thing that I don't like is that he plays the newer King of Fighters King of Fighters thirteen he plays the newer games and then he tries to compare it back to Third Strike whereas he doesn't even play he doesn't even play Third Strike like that anymore and it bothers me that he still beat them and he still beat them God damn North Carolina sucks and that's, and that's what I'm saying that's oh why my God I'm that these guys what I mean, the fuck you, you, you cannot you cannot do that I mean you can play Third Strike every every other weekend it doesn't matter. But you cannot lose to somebody who plays King of Fighters consistently and then still lose to the player who was shitting on you 10 years ago. Again, this all comes back to having self-respect. Okay, because when Justin moved on to Street Fighter 4, he wasn't winning anymore on the East Coast. Okay, we shut that shit down because we have self-respect. You know, and I beating him in tournament, Lloyd's beating him in tournament, Lamez beating him in tournament. Mm -hmm. It's a matter of having self-respect. Even Mutants beating him in tournament. Him in tournament mm-hmm. And that's the point. If you guys are going to lose to a, a King of Fighters fucking 13 uh, player, now he's not even going by a third strike resume. He plays yeah, King of Fighters. He's not even Mexican. Yeah, this guy's black playing King of Fighters. Fucking you up in third strike. 
What kind of paradox is that? It doesn't even make any fucking sense. Like, we're like in a fucking Twilight Zone of Third Strike where black people were winning and playing King, King of Fighters and shit. This is ridiculous. Okay? Get better, North Carolina. Because you guys deserve better than that. All right? You guys have this beautiful arcade. If we had that arcade, we'd be fucking amazing. And you know what? I would put Hold That, Rage, Duke against all you guys. In a, in a 3 v 5 I would put them against you guys fucking free with the low tier. They're fucking... Denzel? I would, hell yeah, that Denzel would OCV that team. I swear to God. Oh my God, he'd be so fucking good. But again, at the end of the day, I guess the point of this segment. <laughs> that was Ali, our weatherman. <laughs> With a live weather forecast. What? <laughs> so, it's going to rain. It's going to rain. Some boots. All right, it's going to rain some boots. Then uh, look, I would put them free against you guys, okay? And I think, I think you guys, I think you guys have a beautiful arcade. No. I envy your arcade. I do. I do too. But you know what? I think we have a graphic that can show what I think about the North Carolina community as a whole i think this one face sums it up denzel <laughs> probably getting dungeoned right now because i see the blue hue on his face <laughs> he's probably getting dungeoned i think that's a super flash and he looks worried you know he's why because like, he's gonna get stunned <laughs> and, and who's that is that ever dread in the back i put him on that team too that's damon there too I and that's damon oh damon would just you just destroy you guys i'm on privilege alone <laughs> he has that light skin, and he will destroy you all with Makoto's, uh, what's it called? The fucking 100% stun? He got that shit on lock. Yeah, Privilege. I bet Naku okay? doesn't have that shit. Oh, Naku does has nothing on lock. <laughs> nothing. His phone isn't even locked. That's how bad this guy is. <laughs> Again, I'm smiling from frustration. Because these guys could do a lot better, but they kind of suck. Okay, thing, and we want you guys to get really better. don't like is that they know that Summer Jam is coming. They know the $500 power bonus is there. They know where the competition is at, but they decided to wait a week or two later to go to TFC. Where no, no one, one's going to go for no Third Strike. Gonna go. They're going to go to fucking play Street Fighter 4 and watch Morgan Doom and, and all of that shit. And watch Common and, Sense and, and beat them all And over watch again. Virgil. They're, gonna, they're not even going to see any Third Strike. You guys should come to Summer Jam where it's going to be fucking live. It's going to be a, be a beautiful well. event. And just because you guys got like 17 head-to-head -head cabinets doesn't mean you're using them right. Okay, wow. you guys suck. Come out, learn a thing or two about this game we call Third Strike, and go back uh, with North Carolina with some notes. Okay, because you're going to need it. And so, uh, we're going to uh, end the stream soon. Uh, obviously, we have, uh, as we said, we have Summer Jam coming up August 29th. Cool. Uh, we will be like... Fight Club 4 with exhibitions coming up. We yep. still have yet to decide the fight card, but... So, please, if you guys have any suggestions, please tweet us at This Is Third Strike with any suggestions or questions you guys might have. And um. also on Facebook at This Is Third Strike as well. And of course, you can always watch this broadcast or any other uh, video or uh, lesson that you've seen before on SF3LP on YouTube. And also, you can follow us on Instagram, <laughs> This Is Third Strike. And also, be sure to check out our Teespring st store with uh, uh, our shirts. Yep. TinyRoll.com slash This Is Third Strike. You will get all the bitches buying these shirts. I got like seven numbers on my way over to this house just wearing the shirt. Who ain't got no bitches? Promise you. This, these t-shirts would get you all the bitches. All right, promise. Buy them. All right, they will get you laid. And again, um, a little preview, a little snippet into our next show, which is going to happen on July 2nd. July 2nd. Um, we will have the Shend in the, the flesh. The, the Shend. Shend. That guy that you got better watching of the videos that he uploaded. The yeah, he's going to be here. God. We'll be here live. In not all, even on Skype, not even through the phone. Live. In all his United Kingdom glory. He's going to be in here with that sexy accent. He's going to be lulling us to third strike sleep with his beautiful soliloquies on why he, he does this for us. He's such talk an amazing person. Gonna He's going to talk about third strike. He might seduce us. We don't know. We're going to hear his backstory. We might fall in love. And, you know, we might just... 
you know, bring you guys another big stream. So be sure to check us out on July 2nd for the next House of Strikes episode. But for now, uh, we are going to leave you with the Twitch channel for twitch.tv slash uh, lost arc whatever whatever. Uh, the link will be posted. But uh, yeah, I mean, you know, more Thursday strike to come uh, later on. Yep. But uh, yeah, I mean, that's that's all we have for now. So, yep. you know, this is Nick Akeo and this is Frankie3S with uh, House of Strikes and we will catch you guys in the next episode.